Okay. Says we are streaming. Just getting uh, the other venue going here. Just give me a second. God bless everybody on Facebook and YouTube and Periscope. Uh, Going to be remembering a little bit today about uh, Jeffrey Fenholt, the death of a uh, person of the Lord that some of us knew. Some of us uh, had the uh, wonderful memories of seeing him witness for the Lord, a life truly changed. Amen. And also, uh, what the Lord has been speaking to me, I want to open up the Word in Hebrews 4 and Romans 10 about how the Word will read you when you read it. It is alive and a beautiful, beautiful uh, dear note that came in from Sister Susan in North Carolina. I want to thank you for that. I think that came in on the email. So let's get started in the Spirit. And uh, take a moment to praise the Lord for this day. Amen. Excuse me, my throat is going again. God bless you today. How are you? It is September 13, 2019. Today is Friday the 13th. You know, I never even give it a thought about be being, you know, a good day, bad day. It's just another day with me. In fact, if anything, God blesses me every day that I can imagine, every day that I am here. No matter if things are awesome, wonderful, or if I'm struggling, because we all have days that are struggling. And so we just praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus, for another day. Okay, I want to share a beautiful note that came in from Sister Susan in Northern North Carolina. Um, dearest Sister Susan, and you are my dearest Sister Susan as well. Amen. God's church service on Wednesday. We're doing Wednesday nights at um, 7 p.m. for those that are not aware uh, in California time just to let the Lord have his way. It's a wonderful time. You know, some of these off times that you think nothing would happen is when it always happens. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I would go to uh, prayer night on Tuesday and Thursday night at uh, any church that I happen to be attending at the time, that's when things happened. And uh, I can remember a lot of uh, Thursday nights in the early 80s when the Lord had me, uh, Stephen and I, in our uh, prayer nights. And wow, the kids would be laying on the carpet under the pews. You know, you just took your kids with you. It wasn't like they had children's church or anything. It was like you just take your kids with you. And <clears throat> so anyway, it was a beautiful blessing, though. And she writes, Dear Sister Susan, God's church service on Wednesday was a blessing to me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for prophesying over me. Isn't that awesome? How God gives us a word when you're... And that's sort of what I wanted to share about today, too. How, you know, the living word of God... The guy that gets up Sunday morning and reads the word, the scripture, you know, usually if you go to a church service, they have the word and here's the word for today. Everybody reads the word. That's what it used to be. <laughs> I don't know how it is where, if you're going to a church or whatever, but used to be you'd get up and read the word, right? 
Yeah, I, I got my audio. I wanted to make sure my audio was happening. Um, anyway, so long story short, uh, it was just beautiful, just beautiful how the Word of God, when you read it, it reads you. You know, we used to call that uh, somebody's reading your mail. God is reading your mail, you know. But that's how awesome to me the Word of God is that it always is so true and it has a personal application. Amen. God's church service on Wednesday was a blessing to me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for prophesying over me near the end of the service. It is so sweet and special to hear through you what the Father is saying about my future. I can't ex can't express how much it encourages me to hear those words from our Abba Father, Abba Father. One of these days, I'll be able to hug you in person and spend some sweet time with you, my sister in Christ. Maybe we'll write new songs together and play and sing duets as well. Amen. Amen. I can't wait. Can't wait. I love the song, Going to My Father's House that I put up the other day that Stephen and I did years ago. Beautiful words and music as well. Beautiful harmony between you and Stephen. You'll be singing with him again very, very soon. Excuse me. To God be the glory for the things he has done and will do. Hallelujah. Yes. And amen. Your sister in Christ Jesus, Sister Susan in Northern California. I'm California. Can I say California? Northern Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. Anyway, it was just a blessing always to receive your mail is so very precious to me. I want to thank you, Susan. And we pray over you again, Susan, that God would just have his beautiful way in your life. He will have you have open doors, put open more open doors of opportunity, Lord. Because you don't waste our time. Every single day is precious to you, Lord. And I ask that you divinely set up, as I know you are, every single moment of Susan's life. And this day and this week, let it be special, Lord, in Jesus' name. A surprise, Lord. Amen. We're praying. We're praying. Okay, I want to uh, now go and remember some memories from uh, you might see picture here of Jeff Fenholt and this was his first wife Rini Rini on the left there of your screen looking at it Jeff is next in line on the right of Rini and uh, I am the blonde the only blonde in the group there that's a sad picture of me but anyway that's the way it was some days I, I was up the whole night I was so excited to interview him in their home this was in their home in Upland, California, in the, uh, I think it was the early 90s, as I recall. And of course, that's Stephen to my my left, looking at the camera picture here on my, uh, to the right of myself. And the forefront, you see two little kids. Who do you think those are? <laughs> those are my munchkins. <laughs> They're not little munchkins anymore. That's Adam and Priscilla. And so uh, they just went with us and they learned the ropes. So want to remember, uh, as I read just a little bit here about Jeffrey Fenholtz, uh, Wikipedia is what I'm going to pick this up from. In fact, I want to thank Deborah John in, uh, Jan John in Texas, who sent me a notification about his passing. I didn't even know it until I saw her pa uh, sent me a note yesterday. Because I'm not heavy on social media. I don't have time, actually. I wish I did. I love to see all the notes that everybody is putting up on Facebook. But I just don't. And Jeffrey is a friend of mine on Facebook. So, like, hello. <laughs> I'm just so busy doing God's work that I just don't have time to socialize. I wish I did. But anyway, thank you, Jan, uh, Jan for sending me that note about Jeffrey. I didn't know. And... Uh, there was a note from a person on Facebook, on Jeffrey's page, that mentioned that uh, he was suffering from a, a physical illness. Now, I don't know. I haven't had time. I don't know. And it's a private thing, probably, anyway. So I'll come back to you guys here. It's a private thing, anyway, you know. People's lives are private. And <clears throat> this is what I remember of Jeffrey. Jeff. 
<coughs> he was very kind, very sweet to us. Uh, they had a beautiful home, beautiful home. And Rini shared some very uh, wonderful memories as well as uh, some, you know, memories that we leave with their family, that we leave with their family. But I uh, got a picture of uh, the personal side. You know what I'm saying, how God shows you things as well as some comments that uh, people make. And so we just want to be a blessing, a blessing at remembering because there was a separation between uh, Jeff and Rini uh, because I believe it's in her testimony, probably publicly anyway, the problems that existed in that marriage. And every marriage goes through things, you know, for us to sit and think that, oh, you know, and to uh, magnify something negative. I just don't feel that that's necessary or proper anyway, because to God be the glory for the things that he has done in all of our lives. Amen. None of us is perfect. Just like uh, one of his, uh, I think it was his son that posted, you know, my, he wasn't perfect. Wasn't my dad wasn't perfect. And of course, uh, these were little ones when we were there, you know, uh, Jeff was born in September 15, 1950. My husband, Stephen, was born in 52. So, like, we were all in the same age. You know, Rini, I don't know how, her age, what that was. But, I mean, we were all, like, in the same age. And it was so cute when we went to Upland to his home. We were invited to his home um, to sit in. This was in his living room. And a beautiful home. My goodness, beautiful home. And he was upstairs getting ready. It was so cute. So we were setting up all the equipment and we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And we waited a while because I think Jeffrey was up looking for his socks, actually. <laughs> and then he couldn't find them. So he just put on his shoes and he came down, you know. But he was a very, uh, I just want to remember him in wonderful ways because this is what the Bible tells us to do, to remember, think on the good things. Amen. Think on the good things. And uh, Jeffrey did love the Lord. There's no doubt about that. He totally, his life totally changed. And a cute little behind the scenes story. When I introduced him the day that I was sitting there in that picture, I was so excited and nervous about interviewing him the night before because he was the first celebrity that I was ever honored to interview on our program, The Waldrop Family Sings, which aired uh, regionally in Southern California through about 11 cable stations, I believe it was. We crossed over three, was it three million homes? I think three and a half million homes. That's a lot of homes. And people would watch our program seven days a week. We became so popular. I couldn't even step outside, you know, my home. People would say, oh, there, there they are. There they are. And I'm looking around who, who, where, <laughs> you know, who are we talking about here? But anyway, so Jeffrey was so kind and, and I was so half asleep because you can see, I look like I'm half, half here, half there, not anywhere. Right. And so I was nervous and I was half asleep introducing him to begin with. And I just looked dead on in the camera. I said today, I wish I had the footage. Uh, I haven't had time to convert it, but I do have the tapes and everything like that. So anyhow, um, I said today we're so honored to have, a uh, Jeffrey Van Holt, who was the original uh, Jesus Christ stupid star on our program today. And he just looked at me serious. He just looked at me serious. I think he was thinking like, did she do this on purpose? No, she's just half asleep. She just did not know what she even said. And that's the way I have been all my life. Like sometimes I say things, you know, backwards. I will I, that's a weird thing about me that I, I'm, I'm not all there sometimes. I think I'm halfway in another planet. So anyway, that's what was cute. He just looked at me and he realized, you know what, Susan, there was no intention of anything here. It just happened. And he just laughed about it because he says, you know what? I was a stupid star. That's exactly what he said. I have it on tape. I have it on tape. And so it was so precious because it totally broke the ice. You know, sometimes you interview people, you don't really know them. You haven't had time to get together. And that's sort of the way it was because I didn't, hadn't had a 
the time to sit down and talk to and meet them. You know, I did with Rini because she was down in the living room with us. But so when Jeffrey came, you know, it was sort of like cold. I mean, not cold atmosphere, but just I didn't know him, you know, and he didn't know me. And so then I introduced him like that. So anyway, that was a little funny behind this. Didn't mean to take up a lot of time talking about that. But then, of course, I saw him several other times uh, at the uh, bi uh, at the business center drive in Northridge. There was a big church that he was uh, singing at, and so uh, I interviewed him several other times on our program. Um, but this was just a beautiful uh, memory I have of Jeffrey. Okay, Jeffrey, uh, September 15, 1950 to September 10. 2019, just three days ago, wow, was an American singer and actor best known for his performance as the title character in the original Broadway theater adaptation of Jesus Christ Superstar, and for his appearance on the cover of Time in later years, Jeffrey gained, I'm going to put this back so you can see that, Jeffrey gained uh, notoriety as a Christian evangelist and singer, as well as controversy over his involvement with the English heavy metal band Black Sabbath. Moving on down, uh, oh, let's see. Let's scroll on down here and see what a personal life. He lived with his wife, Kim, at their home in Newport Beach, California, and his ranch in Colorado. He died on September 10 five days shy of his 69th birthday. Huh. That's strange. Okay. Well, they don't mention... Uh, do they mention Rini? That is sort of different, isn't it? I don't see... Let me see here. Yeah, I do not see listed Rini. That's very strange on Wikipedia that it does not mention Rini. And here is the picture that I'm showing you of Rini. Rini is not Kim. Kim is a different one. So anyway, I just bless his life. And it might be, might be down here. I don't know. I'm looking in Wikipedia, but I do not see Rini mentioned. She could be because I have not had time to read this all. Because I've been uh, very busy. But he, I believe Rini was on TBN and other places, you know, with him. So anyhow, we just want to be a blessing to his life. And we pray, Father God, for his family. We pray for the remaining family members, Father, for his children. And also, Father, for every person that was involved with his life that was considered family, every person, Father, in Jesus' name, because there were many, many, many. Okay, let's move on now to uh, the Word of God, which I enjoy more than anything, is the Word of God. The Word of God is alive. It will read you when you read it. That was what really leaped out at my spirit this morning. Well, actually, in the night, um, <clears throat> I had uh, Brother Derek Prince was playing when I just woke up. And so, uh, anyway, it was a wonderful reminder to myself and my own memories how many times uh, my own life, personally, just reading the Word, how you, and I know you know what I'm talking about, how it will read you when you read it. When you read the Word of God... It becomes alive and it takes on a personal application. I just thought that was such a, a blessing to be reminded of that. Romans ten seventeen. So when so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, God increases our faith. That's what Derek was mentioning on the video this morning, and I totally agree. And he re, uh, referred to Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing. That's how you get faith, and your faith is increased. Romans ten seventeen. It comes by hearing the word of God. Okay, Hebrews 4, 12 was another one. 
how, uh, you know, whenever people, uh, whenever the word is spoken, you know, like you will recite a, it'll just come out of you if you're talking to somebody. You notice how the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen? And that to me was another scripture that I, I enjoyed <clears throat> that leaped out at me. Because, you know, the Spirit knows the Spirit. And if someone is with the Lord, uh, <clears throat> it will bear witness with them and they will say yes. And if somebody does not like the Lord or they're not a Christian or a believer, it will bother them. Whenever you mention anything about God or, or uh, have a verse, it just comes out of you. You know, they're going, they're, it's either abrasive or it's positive. You notice that? That right there tells me that truly that is a spiritual thing that's happening. It's the spirits around or in that person and the spirits are the spirits. The, uh, I'm going to, the spirits, that's bad. That's, that, I'm going to say God. His spirit is around us. Amen? Because we have angels around us. Those are God's creation. <clears throat> and we have uh, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We <laughs> have the Holy Spirit around us. And the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Wow. Think about that. And of the joints and marrow. Wow. The marrow is the center part of a bone. And is a discerner of the thoughts. Discerner of the thoughts. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Of everybody's heart. People that are saved, the people that are not saved. That's why <clears throat> you see people get convicted. You see people get convicted. Amen. So that was uh, basically very simple part that I just wanted to share with you guys. And uh, <clears throat> if you happen to find, uh, <clears throat> boy, my throat is bothering me. I'm so sorry this morning. That was basically it, a very simple, quick word. If you find uh, anything better, let me know. How am I doing today, Deborah? Well, actually, I did a crazy thing last night. Um, I've been doing a lot of picking up things, you know, because I'm a very physically adept, adept, physically able person. I, there's really nothing wrong, but uh, boy, the devil did not want me to get on today. That's for sure because there was I did something wrong. I just picked up in a wrong way. I don't even know what I did, when I did it, but anyway, my wrist uh, just uh, was what do you want to call that? Uh, I tweaked it the wrong way, and so I had Epsom salts last night. My son made me a whole thing that I slept with it on, you know, my wrist, and then of course. Uh, I have, uh, anyway, but God is good. I have no complaints. No complaints. Thank you, Jesus. I am here. <clears throat> I was thinking about Amy Simple McPherson. When she stood up one time and she prophesied and preached, which I believe she was a prophet, and uh, she preached and she got up. This was a testimony of her own kids. Uh, Roberta, I believe it was, it said this. Uh, she said, Mother got up and she said her whole face was like, she burned her face and there was like, I think, second and third degree burns on her face. She never said anything. She got up and started to preach and as she preached, the power of God hit her and she was totally healed as she was preaching. Is that awesome? So that's a, a beautiful thing there. And um, so that was that was uh, just what I felt the Lord uh, wanted to uh, bring about again, that this is a year of huge changes. And that's a, uh, that's a statement of, again, seeing people going home. <clears throat> and 
seeing people going home and that's what I believe we're going to see a lot of like I said the other couple it's been within a week changing of the guard is happening changing of the guard and uh, that means a lot of movement people that are saved and people that are not saved you're going to see people that are not saved God is literally going to take them out that's a cold word to say that's a very abrupt sharp but you know the Holy Spirit will only woo somebody so many times, and that is the only <clears throat> unpardonable sin, is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And there have been people, and I'm saying people that you know that are not saved, people that are celebrities, people that are in political realms, and I see another one. I see another one that the Spirit's are moving on and this is a very evil thing that that I believe uh, the evil spirits they're just always brewing with things you know but I see a very public figure and I'm not going to name names but I see the face and I see that that person is uh, playing with fire playing with fire and uh, they are actually trying to steal somebody else's uh, spouse I'm just going to say it that way and they are presently married to a huge uh, worldwide figure. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's what I see, that uh, this person thinks they can just get away with anything. And you cannot. You cannot. Because all it's going to take is one, you know, brush of an angel wing and out, out you go. And uh, so thank you. Amen. And so that's what I, uh, Eddie Money died also today or yesterday, Sister D is saying. Wow, Eddie Money now. Eddie Money was a, a singer, wasn't he? An actor? Eddie Money. I'm not sure who Eddie Money, Money, Eddie Money, Eddie Money. Let's, but anyway, um, that's what I, I just see. That, that I, we're going to, we're going to see this, Eddie Money. I'm going to see who that was because I'm curious. Eddie Money dies. Let's see. September 13, 2019. Eddie Money just died today. Wow, Brooklyn, New York. He was born in. Known professionally as Eddie Money, an American singer, songwriter, and multi instrumentalist who had success in the 1970s and 1980s with a string of top 40 songs and platinum albums. Yeah, I thought he was a singer. Eddie Money. Uh, what was it? Two Tickets to Paradise was one song. Take Me Home Tonight was another. Wow. Uh, it said that has been he has died after being diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. SFA, uh, 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 esophageal, esophageal cancer. Wow, that is so sad. Very, very sad. Who singles uh, Take Me Home Tonight and Two Tickets to Paradise. Wow. He was 70 years old. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And this is, and he had uh, children, Jesse, Julian, Desmond, Joseph, Zachary. So, Father, we pray for Lori, his spouse, married in 1989. It does not say they ever divorced. Father, we pray for Edward Joseph Mahoney, known professionally as Eddie Money. We pray for that family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that you, that you bless them, that you speak to them that are distant from you <clears throat> that now maybe hopefully they they will be drawn to you from this father god in the name of jesus name of jesus i happen to know um very sad um very sad uh, person that was a neighbor of mine and that i happen to know also uh 
My Little Runaway, he had that song. Oh, now, who is this? Come on, Susan. Here it is. See, my brain is totally on God. When I get totally on God and then I get distracted, I can't remember. Uh, Chuck Westover was his real name, but he was known as Del Shannon. Thank you, Lord. Del Shannon uh, committed suicide. Uh, I knew him since I was like 17 years old, off and on. Uh, through that, I was introduced uh, to the Cherokees recording studio in Chatsworth, when it was in Chatsworth, when it was starting off. And um, so I knew Del Shannon because he actually bought a house that adjoins the property of the family property here that I happen to be living in right now. And so uh, he bought, happened to just buy the house. I mean, like we were immediate neighbors for a long time. So I saw him all the time. And, um, but then he moved from this house to another house within two, one mile, two miles at the most. And in that house, he took his own life. Very sad. He told me stories of how he was so, he hated tour buses and he would, like get down in the fetal position in the back of it he hated tour buses and so a lot of yeah Del Shannon amen Dave that's who it was that I I knew Del Shannon in fact he was uh, wanting to take some of my songs that I had written and the Lord stopped the whole thing isn't that amazing uh, I was looking for them, you know, they were right in the side of my car when I was talking to him, you know, he was, would, everybody goes out for the trash, right? <laughs> Even another neighbor of mine that is uh, Linda Gray of uh, Dallas, the television show, is another neighbor of mine. In fact, that's not a real name, but uh, Linda Thrasher, I believe she was married to Ed Thrasher, who was an artist for album covers. And um, so Linda, her, uh, her daughter, Kelly, used to come up to our house. She'd drive her up here all the time, once a week, for piano lessons. My mother taught uh, Kelly piano. And so uh, that was when Linda was doing uh, commercials for the legs, nylons, you know. And uh, she then moved on to uh, many other projects that I was not real happy about, spiritually speaking, that is. But I pray for Linda, and I see her locally here. Uh, she lives on the same road that I live on. We drive in and out of this area to, you know, on the same paths cross all the time. But anyway, we pray for these people, right? That God puts that we seem to know, you know, God has uh, formed our life, that we see these people, we know these people, a little bit, a lot maybe, or God just puts it on your heart. Like God put a celebrity on my heart years ago uh, in the summer of 2004, and I have not met that person yet, but God showed me that I, there was tons of, I mean, I actually, many, many confirmations. I physically saw him, I was in a room with him, but I have not physically met that person yet. And uh, that person is um, Robert Redford. So I ask for your prayers that God will open the door that I will be able to witness to him. Because the Lord showed me, and I'm going to publicly share this. Here it goes. Lord showed me he has everything money can buy. He has everything that money can buy. But the one thing that you have, he doesn't have. So that has been a burden, a, grie a grieving on my spirit. A grieving. So I ask for your prayers that God will uh, provide that way that I can share the way you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen? Because Robert's getting up there. And that has been on my uh, spirit for uh, since 2004. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord did it. I didn't, I'm not a fan of his. Never go to his movies. In fact, uh, he's not even really the kind of personality that I would be attracted to. And I know many are, but I'm not. I never have been. Never have been. Uh, he has a, what do they call that, dry sense of humor. I'm I like that and me are like hot and cold. 
So um, anyway, I just pray for Robert that he will come to know Jesus. And there's been many uh, things that movies he has, God showed me, I mean, just tons of confirmations. But here and there, <clears throat> I pray for him, and there's no distance in time and space in the Spirit. And God will have his way. God will have his way. And so we thank you, Father God, for this precious time. And I just ask you, Lord, that as we see these this year of huge changes that is upon us, even so, Father, that the Holy Spirit, you would have your way, Lord, and you would draw these people in. Some of them I know are far from you. Some of them I am not sure of. And others, Father God, you have promoted to glory in your way. And I pray for the families of those that are remaining. I pray for our family our thank you, Sister D. I pray for our families, our little group here. I pray for us, our families, that you would use these things that are happening in the world to draw them closer to you. And we give you all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord I think I'm going to play a song that's what I'm feeling led to do thank you Jesus thank you Lord let's see what this is nope that's not what I'm wanting that's not what I'm wanting that's what I'm wanting
home in my father's house in the cool of the evening light. In the evening light. Oh, wow. Wow, what a day. It seems like it's a day of remembering and praying and... Um, you know, that's the thing that the devil hates the most, is that we would remember, that we would remember and we would pray because um, he wants us to be afraid on this day of the 13th of Friday. He wants us to be afraid. He wants us to just, and isn't it amazing that last night, you know, my, my wrist just, I, I, it was like a Simon from hell. No reason at all that my wrist should hurt that bad, swell up. It's still very tender. I'm going to be very careful with it. But I have just been praying. And um, then for no reason at all, I went to drop the green screen. And my back was like, what? Are you kidding me? I don't even know. And so my son has been wonderful. He's been helping doing a lot of things. And, and I mean, just doctored me last night. It was so wonderful. And I want to pray for Susan in Hawaii, for restoration of your vision and mine too, she says. So we pray for, uh, for this. Uh, what, Linda Carter, actually, Beverly, is a cousin of Linda Gray. Didn't know if you knew that. They're cousins. How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that? And Susan in Hawaii has a long list of people that God has allowed her to know over the years, as well as be involved with a lot of professionals that are very, very visible. So we pray for Susan's vision in Hawaii. And Susan in Northern Carolina, I pray as well. I'm feeling led to for that as well. In fact, people that need visions restored. And I'm not saying that you're wanting that. I'm saying it's possibly the season God is going to do it. As well as Randy, I'm speaking in. The Lord just popped you into my head. It's like the vision is for an appointed time. Write it down. Remember? In Habakkuk. But I want to say this, that God has his time. So I pray, Father, the day that the Lord, that the devils would intend for evil, Friday the 13th, turn it around for those that love you, Lord, those that love you. And Father God, bring about your perfect will. Let your perfect will come forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray. I pray. Sando sabra leta. And again, it shifts. The ground is shifting right now here, right now. I ask, Father God, that you heal Susan's eyes also. Heal Susan's eyes. And also for Janet had a cor cor corneal transplant Tuesday. Oh, my Lord. Jesus, we pray for Janet's eyes. Susan's eyes. Praying for anybody that has eye conditions, Lord God, heal the eyes in the name of Jesus. Heal the eyes, Father God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we ask that you do these things in your precious name, that you touch the eyes. Touch the eyes in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus, Lord God, heal, heal, heal. Anybody that needs eyes, eyes. In fact, it's not just physical eyes. The Lord is showing me it's spiritual vision and discernment and spiritual eyes to be opened, that the lid come off of deception, years of deception that the enemy has tried to not allow them to see not allow them to see, but Father, we pray that they will see, that you will take the scales off the eyes and they will see, and they will not only see, but believe in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Father God, we pray for Terry's computer. Praying for Terry's computer. And also Linda says, Linda, praying for Linda. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, everything that is needed, everything in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Brother Terry, for agreeing. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Dave. Samar alate, sabar alato, haba haba shombra late. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is, I see a person going step by step up a mountain. It's almost like the mountains of Hawaii, the mountain, you know, the volcanoes, the volcano mountains, how you can walk up those. And I want to say, you're going up the mountain, but it's the rich ground, the black, rich earth under your feet that the minerals are so rich in. That's what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing God is taking you higher, higher, and the ground under your feet is so rich. You might not know it, you might not see it, and you might know it. You might know that you're walking on God's ground. It might be ground that you are claiming by the Spirit, because, you know, wheresoever your feet go, God gives you dominion, and you possess the land. But there's something about the richness of the earth under your feet, and you're going up the mountain. I don't know everything. I'm just sharing, and I thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your blessings of this day. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you do these things. You do these things. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. Habarala Sando Sabra Lete. Baptism of the Spirit. God is giving that to somebody. I just see it. I'm, I'm releasing it, saying it as He's showing me. The Spirit realm, the Spirit realm. God is taking you to a newer, deeper spiritual realm. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that. And someone's going through a tunnel of darkness, depression. Jesus, Jesus, just cry out, Jesus. Because Jesus says, I will lead you out if you call on my name and you use my name and say, Jesus Christ, I will come and sup with you. But first, I want you to recognize me and leave all of those other gods behind. This probably is not for somebody that is part of the family online. This is for somebody that just happened to tune in. Someone is mocking. Jesus, I pray for them. I pray for that one. Because they think they're getting away with it. But God says, I see you. I see you. And you're getting away with only fooling yourself. That's all you're doing is fooling yourself. You're listening to the devil's lies that you are actually doing something you think nobody knows about in darkness. But God says, I see you. I see you. God's eyes seeing you. Be very careful who you mock, who you try to mark. Because God's mark is on that one. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Because you will be better to have a millstone around your neck than to live eternity paying, paying for the bad thoughts and intents of your heart. Jesus, we pray the blood of Jesus over each one. Father, now I just pray for everything else that's unmentionables, unmentionables, unmentionables. 
Thank you for this day. Thank you that you are moving. You are moving. We love you, Lord, that you do these things for us. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. <coughs> In Jesus' wonderful name. Okay. I love you. <coughs> Forgive my cough. None of us are perfect, amen. Have a blessed weekend. We will continue Monday. Oh, let's see. Monday, I have to be at the Samaritan Hospital in Los Angeles taking a patient down that cannot get down there themselves. It's uh, one of the jobs God has me about. So I will try to put up a broadcast and hopefully uh, get my son to broadcast it while I'm down there. He'll do that for me here. I will make a pre-recorded message and get that out to you. Okay? I will try to do my best. So I'm always here for you. I'll try to do that for you. If not, I will see you uh, as soon as I can, uh, which probably will be Tuesday, I'm guessing. Um, this is a very serious heart operation that's going to be happening in the Samaritan Church. And... Uh, for a person that's not saved, actually. So you can keep them on your prayer request. Um, what was I going to say? Send me your prayer requests. And um, we will stay in touch over the weekend. God bless you. And uh, like Terry says, don't overload yourself. I, I do want to have productions going out seven days a week. I'm working on that. But I have to also do what I can and to let God, trust God, that uh, he will do the rest. Amen. Have a beautiful weekend in Jesus' name. And uh, we will just continue to see how God is going to continue to change the guard. Get ready for God to be using you. God is going to be doing this. He's already doing it, but God is going to truly be blowing our minds when we pray for people to just, I see hands growing out. I see amazing things growing out. But I also see salvation and rededication, which is the biggest thing. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. In Jesus' name, I will see you very soon.
Thank mm-hmm. you.